Today on the channel from Masters of the Universe Revelation, we've got the new Merman, and from Shira, Princess of Power, we've got Grizzlor. The spirit of the warrior will run forever. Kyle here, and welcome back to the channel for another Masters Universe Revelation and Shira Princess of Power unboxing and review with Grizzlor and Merman. But for all your He-Man needs and a whole lot more, make sure you're hitting up Entertainment Earth. Use discount code Kyle. Save yourself 10% on all in-stock items. Anything over $59 does ship free. And we get to pull out some new Masterverse figures here today in Grizzlor and one that's kind of new in Merman, and I guess we're going to do this review like we do all the other reviews on the channel. We're going to take a look at the packaging. We're going to talk about it. We're going to unbox it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to see where it goes from there. We're going to start it off with the old Merman. Merman, he's been in the line before. Some people like that one. Some people were hoping for a more classic style of Merman. Get a little bit of that right here, where the last one had a little bit of a pirate theme to it in some ways. This is more on board of what we really think of with Merman, so of course we're going to do some comparisons later on in this video with some other Merman figures uh, on the channel here. So there it is, there's old Merman in the package, of course Revelations, the series, supposed to be coming back. Is this supposed to come back this summer? Maybe I'm dreaming that, I don't know. It's got the old Netflix logo over there, big window box, got the Masterverse on the top with all those hieroglyphics going on. 30 points of articulation and a secret barcode that nobody knows what it does. Uh, I'm sure it does something something magical. Something magical, I'm sure. And we got the Ocean Warlord Merman on the side. Oh, him and the Warlord from wrestling. What a tag team. The tag team that should have formed many years ago. There it is right there. Merman looking uh, very uh, regal up there. Just standing there looking. He's angry at that sea. The sea was angry, my friends. That's what George Costanza told me once in the 90s. Uh, but there it is. There's old Merman on the back. And we got the cross cell. Of course, we're unboxing all these on the channel. So stay tuned for these other unboxings. Got a little blurb there for Merman. Let's see what it says. Let's see what Merman's up to today. The old ocean warlord. Prior to Skeletor's disappearance, Merman was the Lord of Destruction's reluctant ally. He commanded an army of Aquaticans and terrorized the Crystal Sea. Oh, Crystal Sea. Beautiful this time of year. Proving to be a valuable resource in the fight against He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, their inability to see eye to eye, however, often led to their downfall. Oh, it just always happens. It's like Serpentor, Cobra Commander, uh, you know, Webster and George Papadopoulos. There's just so many instances of that over the years. Uh, that's the way it goes. That's the way the old cookie crumbles from time to time. We're going to pull him out. we got that uh, kind of cobblestone background wall there we see with all these Masterverse figures. See you later, Merman. Goodbye. And we get old Merman in the plastic prison. Oh, we're locked in. We're locked in at the arms and the legs. Of course we are. Get the old trusty pink scissors out right here. Let's pull it out. Let's cut him out. Let's get all this. Let's get old Merman free. He needs to get back in the water ASAP. He's going to die up here if he doesn't get some water in his lungs. Or do, does he have lungs? I don't know. He's got gills. He's got gills. All right, let's pop everything out. All kinds of hands. We're going to be able to choose our hand adventure, it looks like here. We always love doing that, of course. And up oh, there it almost, almost. There it is. See you later. Oh, twist ties everywhere. Always a rough day for the vacuum. Always a rough day. But let's look at these accessories on Merman first, as we always do. A lot of reuse on this one. A little few extra bells and whistles, but a lot of reuse from the last version of Merman. Like I said, we'll talk about it here in a second. But we do get two fists of fury. Merman throws those underwater punches. Man, they're like slow motion coming at you. But man, when they connect, they get you. But he's got two Fist of Fury right here, all in gold. Uh, makes sense. Then we do got a gripping hand in gold. I think that matches the opposite of the other one. So we do have that. And the same thing here. We got the opposite hand here. He's got the open slapping hand. Or the old swimming hand. The old creature from the Black Lagoon swimming hand. Right there. I'm here for that. And then, thankfully, all is right in the world. He's got his corn cob sword. Talked about it before when I was a little kid when I had my merman figure. I always thought it was a corn cob uh, he was fighting with there. But it does kind of look like that. I guess it's supposed to be kind of like coral or reef or something. Maybe that's the case. But to me, it'll always be a corn cob sword. And I know I'm not alone on that. I'm not alone on that. But nice gold color here. Got a little bit of a dark wash to this thing as well. So it looks like it's seen some battle. It's seen some things over the years. And uh, speaking of somebody that's seen some things, we get to see Merman here. No, uh, no carved out eye on this one like we saw in the last version. 
So very interesting to see that here. A little bit of a choose-your-own-adventure with this merman as well. He's just got this big old apparatus piece over the top, onto his shoulders, around his neck. Nice rubber feel to this too. Not a hard plastic. It's a nice kind of soft rubber. Of course, you can pop his head off and you can remove this if you want to. You can choose your own merman adventure at the end of the day. Uh, but definitely looks good. Got a little jewel there in blue. Looking really nice. He does got a very neon kind of uh, belt. Seafoam green maybe? I don't know. Uh, he does got that, and he's got that same blue color jeweled up uh, that he has up here, down here in his belt as well. He's got a very famous uh, attorney uh, loincloth, I guess, uh, underwater edition. He does have that. It's almost like a translucent. It's not quite there, but it kind of has that look to it, a little bit of a shine uh, to it there. And then he's got some uh, shin guards here, like a young Terry Steinbach of the sea. Uh, he's got that going there, nice little crowns at the top. He does got his gold gauntlets here on the forearm representing there. And then he's got, I guess these are gloved hands. I don't know. Are they gloved? I don't know what's going on with Merman and his uh, skin tone color. It's just all over the place. But then you do get Merman in the head sculpt. I think we know this is Merman. He's got the big old eyes going on. He's got some teeth showing. Got some orange against that dark kind of blue color his skin tone is. Looking really nice there. It's interesting he's got four fingers, but he's got three toes. We saw that with Monolith on Spawn. We saw it, I think, with Chode in the Marvel Legends. There's, there's something going on there. I don't know what it exactly is. But let's walk through the articulation on this guy. Let's see if I can pop this head off. Uh, there it goes. Very easily to take off. These are great for customizers, as we do know. So if you don't like that on your merman, you can just have him like this if you really want to. So easily removable. But his arms do go all the way around. You do get a bicep cut. Double jointed, pinless elbows. Hits being played right here at the table. Hands back, forth, side to side. Hands, of course, removable. Head removable, as we saw. Up and down, side to side. Plenty of movement on this head, so it looks like he's swimming. You can do all kinds of stuff like that. Big old hula hoop at the middle. Traditional waist cut. Big old merman underwater splits right there. You do get a thigh cut. Double jointed, pinless knees. The hits being played once again. Boot cut, ankles back, forth, side to side. Plenty of articulation here for merman. I am definitely here for that. He does feel pretty good in hand, but he does, doesn't does feel as new as some of these Masterverse figures we've had over time. Now, I don't know, maybe that's just me, but does he fit on a ringside collectible stand? Use discount code KYLE, save 10%. There you go, fits perfectly on a Mattel stand right there. Like what I see, like how he fits. Fits pretty good if you ask me, but we'll do comparisons at the end of the video for him and Grizzlor. If I can get him to stand up kind of straight. Kind of straight. There we go. That's good enough. Not bad, of course. Merman, one of the OG villains. I always thought of Merman and Beastman as kind of the two main villains. Uh, Beastman and Merman, just two legends. Two legends in the uh, skullduggery and villainery uh, of 80s cartoons, we'll call it right there. Now we turn our attention to a hairy bipedal creature. And you know I'm a sucker for a hairy bipedal creature. So we got Grizzlore here. And I've talked about it on the channel before. As a little kid, I watched a little Shira. I saw like an episode or two, but it it just wasn't for me. I just was not, I wasn't forward thinking enough as a little kid to watch a woman, a uh, female, teenager, whatever you want to call Shira, uh, leading the way, fighting the Horde and everything else. As, as cool as I thought the Horde was, I was hoping they'd fight He-Man. I just wasn't feeling it. I just wasn't feeling the She-Ra stuff. I know I'm not alone out there. It's probably not PC to say, but it's true. Kyle was not going to watch Adventures of a Female. It just wasn't what a little Kyle wanted. He wanted the male action. Oh, I love that male-on-male -male action. You guys know as a little kid, favorite of mine, favorite of mine. Who knows? But Grizzlor, very cool. One of those guys that caught my eye at an early age because, like I said, I've loved a hairy bipedal creature as long as I can remember. I remember as a kid in the back seat of my car, we'd go to my grandma's or something. It'd be a two-hour drive or whatever, and I'd be looking out that window because there was no iPads back in the day. I don't know if you guys knew that. I'd be looking out that window, and I'd be staring. I'd be staring in those fields and stuff, and I'd be like, man, maybe I'm going to see Bigfoot running around. I'd always be on the lookout. And still to this day, when I'm doing long work drives, I'll kind of gaze to the side on these fields and forests I drive through. Hoping to see just a glimpse, just a glimpse of Bigfoot. And I always feel like the farther north I go, uh, the the chance of seeing Bigfoot just increases every single time. And then when I was a kid, we'd drive home late at night and I'd look up at the stars and it'd be a clear sky. I'd look at the stars and I wonder if there's any UFOs up there. I was watching too many In Search Ofs and Unsolved Mysteries as a little kid in reruns. Uh, and it just changed my life forever, apparently. But enough of all this jibber jabber. Let's get down to old Grizzlore here. Old Princess of Power right there. Grizzlore. Grizzlore in the package. Big window box. Masterverse at the top. 30 points articulation. The secret barcode. Grizzlore is the hairy henchman of the evil horde. There you go. Hairy bipedal creature. We're here for it. On the side, there he is. I believe he was like brainwashed or something. He was really a good guy deep down, I think. 
Uh, but there he is on the back, of course, cross sell merman. We just talked about. We'll do the other video. Stay tuned for that on the channel. Got the blurb. Let's see what it says about our old friend Grizzlor. Grizzlor. Let's see here. Fewer feared across Athernia, Etheria, Etheria, more than the bloodthirsty beast Grizzlor, captured and brainwashed by Hordak. Well, there you go. Grizzlor now loyally serves the leader of the evil horde as gatekeeper of the fright zone. Give us the fright zone. As well as a feral soldier to be unleashed in the battlefield. There it is. Old Grizzlor doing his horde things. Doing things for the horde. Uh, I think he was on the horde tour in the 90s. I think he was a roadie for Blues Traveler, if I'm not mistaken. There it is. Packaging. See you later. Goodbye. All right. Are we locked in? Of course we are. We're locked in all over the place. Grizzlor in the plastic prison doing plastic prison things. Can't keep a good hairy bipedal creature down, though. We know that. We know that firsthand. We're going to get him free from this plastic prison. We're going to free this guy from his mind control. And uh, we're truly going to be off to the races before you know it. We're going to pop these hands out. Whoa, losing hands. Pop an old Grizzlor out. All right, there it is. Uh-oh, we lost the axe. There it is. See you later. We got the axe. Do, will we see a smash? We'll see. I don't know. I don't think that's in the cards here. Let's pull him out. Seeing a lot of reuse here right off the bat that I can tell. Uh, but we do get two hands. We get a gripping hand. We get two gripping hands over here. We do get a claw hand and a fist of fury hand. You know how it is. Those hairy bipedal creatures, they usually don't use weapons. They usually use their fist or their claws. That's what they use in my experiences, of course. But we do have both of those. We do get a big old battle axe here. You got the horde uh, symbol emblem logo whatever you want to call it right on the axe this axe has seen some things it's got a dirty wash to it it's got some dings and dents in it got a nice handle it is all in one color and a little extra color wouldn't hurt anybody on this but it is a big old axe here he's ready to swing if he needs to then we got the Horde Crossbow, an old favorite. I'm sure we'll see this again maybe eventually. All in green, got a little translucent red there in the arrow department. Got one big old eye at the top. Looks kind of like a lizard, reptile, something like that. But it is uh, the Horde Crossbow for old Grizzlor. Now we're going to dive in. We're going to see what all the fuss about is with old Grizzlor here. And uh, Grizzlor got some hair, some real fur on it. It feels nice and soft. Feels like a new puppy is what he feels like. But he's angry. And I guess some puppies are angry probably. I don't know. Uh, but definitely a, a nice soft fur to him. I guess we'll start with the head on him. Got the big old fangs going on. I love the look of those fangs. Uh, I'm here for that. And then he's got sculpted in hair around the head. There's no real fur on the head like we've seen with some of his figures over the years. Uh, but looking good there. The big horde emblem right there on his chest around all that fur. Uh, looking nice. He's got two black wrist gauntlets there. He's got an Eternia, or I guess Etheria, uh, loincloth going on right here. He's got a nice belt there. You got the old uh, boots down here, the Horde-issued uh, military boots, I think these are at the end of the day. Uh, looking nice as well there. But a lot of reuse of this one. This is straight up a Beastman repaint. Of course, Beastman from the Masters Universe Revelation series. Uh, so we've seen this before. A little different color to it, but same feel to it. And I guess gotta get the most out of your molds. And you only got so many hairy bipedal creature bodies you can use. So they are using that one here. Arms do go all the way around. You do get a bicep cut. Double jointed, pinless elbows. Hands removable back and forth, side to side. You got a hula hoop at the top. Then you got traditional waist. Those big old Grizzlor splits. Look at that. He's not messing around in the fright zone. Got the thigh cut, double jointed, pinless knees, boot cut, ankles back, four side to side. And then, of course, head movement. Head is removable. I am here for that. He does got a spot in his back so you can store his axe if you want to. Always love to be able to store all my stuff on a figure, of course. But definitely looking mean, looking hairy, looking bipedal, looking like a Grizzlor, really, at the end of the day. But does he fit on a ringside collectible stand? What do you know? He's fitting on that stand. He's got a little tough, tough movement in his legs down here. And I got a little bit of paint overspray on his ankle. Looks like the paint dripped just a hair, just a hair down there. But there it is, old Grizzlor, ready to be menacing, ready to take on the world if he needs to. And let's grab some other Grizzlors. How about a, a little Super 7 Filmation uh, Grizzlor here? Of course, you guys know I'm just a classics guy, but we got a little Filmation version. No real fur on this one here. But then we do got the Classics Regular Edition. This is a pretty cool one as well. Uh, he's all furred out. He's all ready to go. Looking really, really nice. I love the looks of that one there. So we got a little bit of Grizzlor throughout the years in this kind of scale, I guess we'll call it here. We're a little Classics action. And then we got to compare some Merman. How about we'll put Merman right to the side here. I did talk about that Revelations figure. This was the first version where he was like a an old sea pirate is what he was. He got lost an eye along the way somewhere. So we got a little two different versions. And you could tell technically mix and match you could remove this and put this on here if you wanted to there's a lot of stuff you could do with this you could choose your own merman adventure really at the end of the day 
but we'll stick this one down a little bit down the line now he doesn't want to stand up anymore there we go there we go and then we do of course got the classics version you guys know as i said i'm just a classics guy absolutely love this one get two head sculpts that i go back and forth which one i like better all the time and then the final version is, of course, the filmation version of Merman. I guess what most people think of when they think of Merman from the cartoon, obviously, is the filmation version. Probably not the Netflix version, but definitely cool line of Merman figures. This isn't even all the Merman from my collection. There's a lot of Merman figures, as we do know, but if, like I said, he's a top henchman. And Grizzlor, a top henchman for the Horde. So it's all about them henchmen here today on the channel. But what say you guys and gals out there in YouTube land? What are your thoughts on this Grizzlor? What are your thoughts on this Merman? you picking any of these up easy passes playing the long game let me know in the comments down below i'd love to hear your thoughts on Grizzlore and of course merman and have you ever seen a bigfoot let me know that in the comments as well don't forget to like this video don't forget to subscribe to the channel turn on the old notification bell as we got videos every single day and we got even more content for you over on patreon including early access to all these videos bonus content exclusive content giveaways q and a's you name it, it's over on the Patreon. And best of all, you do support the channel. You can also support the channel over at ProWrestlingTees.com. Search Kyle Peterson. And don't forget about social media, SirPaul64 on Twitter, Instagram, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson. So for Grizzlor and Merman, I'm Kyle. And I'll see you guys all real soon.